today we're talking about shark fishing. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Tackle Talk. So, obviously, we're talking about shark fishing. Why? Well, number one, we're planning on going to the beach for a little family vacation, a little camping trip down there in about two weeks. And then, two, Shark Week's coming up. So, which always kind of goes hand in hand for me because I watch Shark Week, I get jacked up, and I want to go down to Florida and catch some sharks. So, that's kind of what we're doing. So, let me tell you what I use as far as shark fishing goes. Uh, I've got two main setups, and uh, I'm going to go through uh, the ins and outs of each of them, and uh, hopefully you get some out of this. So, let's get started. Number one, my big shark rig. Now, this is a pin 9 knot. Uh, I've got it on a 6 uh pin rod. I got it as a combo off of eBay for like 150 bucks. I'm cheap, it's what I could afford, I bought it. Now, one of the things I love about this reel is that it has a huge uh, spool so I can fit a lot of line on there, which is key when you're land-based shark fishing. So to, uh, to help me out with that even more, I got uh, this PE braid. This is a 140 pound braid that I've got on here. And then I've got that hooked up to a 100 and 50 pound mono top shot. Now, there's a couple reasons for why I do this. One, even though this has a lot of line capacity, which I think there's like almost 1,100 yards on this reel, there is absolutely no stretch in braid. So what'll happen is sometimes you'll get something wrapped around or, you know, things happen, okay? But a lot of times your line will just pop. Another thing is it's not very abrasion resistant. So, you know, if you were fishing just straight braid, you know, you might get the fish's tail wrapped in it, you might run across a sandbar, might run across a shell bed, something of that nature, and um, you'll, you'll lose your fish. So I use that, that top shot because it gives me a bunch of stretch, it's very abrasion resistant, and I'm not gonna have to worry about, you know, my line getting cut. Now, the next thing I do, as I attach this is a, uh, a slide and egg sinker. This is right at 16 ounces, so that's a pound of lead right there. And what I like to do is I drop it right next to my leader when I go out there and drop my baits. Now this is a 400 pound cable. This is about, oh, six foot. When I drop my uh, bait, I try to keep as close to this leader as possible. And I always keep my uh, drag I actually never keep my drag on, I keep the bell open, so you hear that little Oh, if that don't get you so excited right there. Now anyway, it's back to what I was saying. So when that fish grabs that bait, this is sitting on the bottom, and as he pulls, it stays stationary, and he's able to really eat that bait so that I get a much better chance of getting that hook where I want it. Now let's talk about hooks. This is a 16 knot circle hook. Now, this is an offset circle hook. So what I'm gonna do to correct that, is I'm gonna take a hammer and just kinda bend it back into place and make it legal. Uh, because in Florida, you have to use circle hooks and you have to use circle hooks that are a non-offset. Now, you'll need to go to the uh, Florida Wildlife Conservation page and uh, I think it's fwc.com. And they've got a little quiz that you need to take now starting July 1st of 2019 for land-based shark fishing. Um, it's really simple, it takes you about 20 minutes, there's only 10 questions to answer and then you get a free certificate. All it really reviews is the new laws, what you need to have, what kind of gear you need to use, shark identification, and uh, you know it's really to protect the fish. Um, a lot of sharks don't make it because people will leave them out of the water too long, taking pictures and all this kind of stuff, and bring them fully out of the water. You really want to try to keep their gills submerged. So um, it just kind of goes over all that kind of stuff so that you can protect the fish, the people around you, and yourself while catching and releasing the fish. So definitely go do that and check that out. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you, and this is something I do. Some of y'all might be avid shark fishermen and go, that's a terrible idea. I really love that sound. This is what I do. I have got a little... I have no idea what it's called. Some kind of little chain link uh, screw lock. 
you get them at the hardware store, there's a 200 pound capacity. And uh, I've got it attached to my barrel swivel up here, 600 pound barrel swivel, 600 pound barrel swivel. And then I just throw it on there. This way I can wrap my leaders up and keep those in a different package and not have to, you know, drag it around everywhere. And then this way with the barrel swivels, everything can twist, the fish can move around, you're not gonna get line twists and stuff. Everything works out great. Haven't had any problems out of this. I might find out that this could be the reason something fails, but as of right now, this has worked phenomenal for me. So that is my big fishing, or my big shark fishing setup. Now let's go to what most people are probably gonna use, especially if you're a tourist, you're just there on vacation or something like me, you're probably gonna use something more like this. This is just a big catfish rod combo. I've got 40 pound monofilament line, and I've got 60 pound braid as backing underneath all of this. Then I've got, flip the bail here. Then I have a three ounce lead pyramid sinker, which I just attached to the line. Now this is 80 pound wire. I just went and bought some wire at, the, uh, at Academy and I do, I attach a swivel to the top of it, again, so I don't get line twists, so if the fish can move around, I got less chance of losing it. Then I do a haywire twist, which all I'm doing is I take the wire and wrap around itself multiple times, about 10 to 12 times, and you shouldn't have a problem out. I do the same thing at the other end. And this is a five aught circle hook. Again, this is offset. I'm gonna fix this. A lot of, I was actually using this. I use it uh, for redfish. I've caught a lot of sharks on it, and this is a shark rig for me, but this is also my redfish rig, so same difference. A lot of times, though, when I'm not fishing for redfish, or if I'm not fishing for sharks, I'll, uh, I won't put the wire on there, but the reason I've got the wire on is I was actually fishing for redfish and kept hooking into sharks, and they were taking my stuff, so this is how I was able to just at least land the fish that I was catching. This little setup has... Uh, been one of my go-to's for surf fishing or I, I fish out of my canoe a lot. Um, I caught a five, yeah, five foot black tip shark out of my canoe on this little rig right here. Uh, this is actually the Jaws. Not huge, but you know, it's enough to do some damage. It'll, it'll take a finger or two. Um, here's another one that I caught. This guy was closer to six foot and uh, another black tip, and I caught him several years ago, same kind of setup. So this really does catch tons of fish. Uh, I catch a lot of black tips, spinner sharks, um, oceanic white, er, why did I say that? Atlantic sharp nose, not oceanic white tips. I've never caught one of those. Be cool if I did though. But uh, those are usually the, the ones that I catch the most. I've caught a few little hammerheads and bonnet heads. Um, but this is always held up. I've lost very few fish, and usually it's not because of uh, not because of the gear I'm actually using. It's more or less because something crazy happened, like my line. I remember one time I actually got all excited, and the line got wrapped around the handle like that, and it just popped. So always keep your uh, your drag set when you're first fishing. I like to keep it real loose. And then as I get the fish, I'll tighten down on it and then set and then just adjust my drag. But keep an eye on your drag when you're fighting a fish. You can pretty much land any fish out there on just about any pound test as long as you've got plenty of line in your drag set. There are exceptions, but in general, you can pretty much land just about anything out there. Um, let's talk about baits. For big sharks, I use bonitas. I use things like grouper heads and snapper heads. You just wait for like a, a fishing boat or a party boat coming back. They'll do a lot of uh, you know cleaning their fish and stuff. And usually nine times out of ten, they don't mind if you uh, take the heads and use them for bait. Uh, so I do that. Mullet's a great bait. Uh, stingrays. Uh, I usually take my spear gun and shoot a few uh, stingrays out in the bay and use those for bait. And those that's primarily my big shark stuff. Uh, small sharks, I use a lot of cut bait or live pinfish. Um, pinfish anywhere, I think it was about that big of a pinfish that I caught that, uh, that I caught this shark on. So, you know, it's almost perfect mouth size for them. Um, then again, I've used whole mullet, uh, little pieces of stingray, like I said, cut bait, uh, 
scraps after I've caught some Spanish mackerel. Those are great because it's really oily. And um, the oilier that the fish is, the more of a kind of slick you're gonna have and more scent so that the fish can really find it a lot better. So things like bonitas, tunas, mackerel, anything like that that has a real high oil content, those are great baits. Uh, but you really can't beat live baits. So, you know, fishing whole mullets, whole pin fish, things like that are really excellent baits. And those are, you know, my go-tos, obviously. So uh, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. I know I've got this camera rocking all over the place because I can't stop putting my arms on the table. I've got bad manners. But uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If you've got any comments, you know, go ahead and drop those in the comment section. Um, let me know what you use. Let me know what your setup is. Uh, if you've got any hints and tricks. The, the great thing about fishing is you can never stop learning. And that always gets me amped up because there's always something. You know, once I think I know everything, somebody will show me something that I had no idea. And it just blows my mind. And I love it. I love it. So uh, any kind of tricks, hints, tips, I'd love to hear about them. And again, if you've got any questions about any of this stuff, the big rod, the small rod, um, the line, the hooks, what I do, how I cook them, uh, let me know. One of the things I will say, you know, I've got these two pair of jaws right here, and these are two of the, the black tips that I caught. Usually I only keep black tips, and I'll keep a few uh, Atlantic sharp nose. Uh, those are my favorites to eat, the black tips and Atlantic sharp nose. But uh, as many sharks as I have caught, I've let the majority of them go. I'm a big advocate for uh, sharks. I love sharks, everything about them. Um, so I'm not out there just catching them and killing them all. You know, I'll keep usually one a trip, unless I, they're small, like the Atlantic sharp nose or something like that, I might keep two. If I catch a big black tip like that, I mean, that's one year, that's one year. You know, so uh, don't ever get more than what you need. You know, and shark usually has a really high mercury content. That's why I like these smaller species of shark anyway. But, uh, so you don't want to eat it all the time, but you know, you catch a, you know, a decent fish, you know, I think, you know, this might have gone, I don't know, between 50 and 60 pounds, and this one was closer to 100 pounds, roughly, you know, that's plenty. You don't need more than that, that's good. Cut you some steaks, smoke them up, enjoy it with your family and friends, and uh, that's really all there is to it. Again, I really appreciate y'all checking in, watching the video, and, uh, Y'all holler at me next time. We'll have something else because I'm on this little saltwater kick now, so maybe we'll find something else to do. Till next time, y'all.